we're proud of ourselves and we're not gonna go down. If you wanna come in here and tell us what to do, we're gonna throw your ass out. And if you start to stop that, we're gonna kill you. I'm pulling my knife out and I'm fighting to the death. They wanna fight, they'll get one. I know I'm going to get some blowback for this video, but I have nothing but absolute contempt for the so-called skeptic community and everything they stand for. The edgy atheists that built a career out of punching low-hanging evangelical fruit. The gamer gators and anti-feminists that whine about how their precious nerd communities are being subverted. The people that think the intellectual dark web and classical liberalism, or just John Stuart Mill liberalism, is a conservative ideological force. If conservatism is just progressivism going the speed limit, then the skeptics and liberalists are trying to remove the conservative brakes. This community arose out of the counter-reaction to the George Bush Jr. administration. The post-9-11 jingoism and blind patriotism of the time was paired with an evangelical Christian fanaticism. This religious fervor eventually died down amid the 2008 financial recession and the subsequent bank bailouts. The rebels against the new Obama bailout regime and the old Bush war and bank bailout regime calcified into the Tea Party movement on the right and the Occupy Wall Street movement on the left. I personally got my start in politics from Ron Paul's 2012 presidential campaign. Out of these respective movements came a call out for opposition to traditional authority, whether it was the government or organized religions. Backed by the credentials of the four horsemen of the non-apocalypse, Richard Dawkins, Christopher Hitchens, Daniel Dennett, and Sam Harris, and the one horsewoman, Ayan Hirsi Ali, the pan-libertarian movement against authority coalesced online as the atheist and skeptic community. In his video, The Errors of YouTube, the distributist describes the three main epochs of political YouTube. The first era, from 2009 to 2012, was dominated by the atheist YouTubers, champions of rationality and common sense. They boldly condemned the lowest of the low-hanging fundamentalist fruit. Then, around 2013 to 2014, there was a schism. The anti-authoritarian movements were replaced by the new identity politics movements of the culture wars. The shooting of Michael Brown led to the Black Lives Lives Matter movement, and Gamergate exposed the feminist corruption that had taken place in the video game industry. The second era of YouTube, between 2013 and 2016, was defined by anti-social justice warrior content. The feminists and identitarians are being irrationally angry and self-righteous, so we must post and critique their cringe on YouTube, thought a plethora of skeptics. The new low-hanging fruit was social justice. However, Unlike the Christians, the feminists and SJWs had institutional backing from universities and the approval and protection of Silicon Valley corporations. Then, the 2016 elections happened. The Great Meme War saw the mimetic fight to win hearts and minds in support of presidential candidate Donald Trump, while the Brexit referendum saw the United Kingdom's mass refusal to remain in the European Union. The ascension of Donald Trump into the presidency meant that the highest office of power was held by a shitposting anti-SJW, while the soft cultural power had been consolidated by the SJW left. The president might be a right-wing culture warrior, but the media, Silicon Valley, and every HR department in America had come under the SJW wing's control. This led to what the distributist called the free-for-all era of YouTube. If the current era of YouTube is in chaos, then where does that leave our skeptic community? They either became conservative or lived long enough to see themselves become SJWs. They either adapted and found new niches or tried to maintain the status quo of previous epochs by continuing to attack low-hanging Christians and SJWs. Now, before I condemn them, I first want to clarify who and what I'm condemning. I'm going to split the current skeptic and liberalist community into four different branches, condemn all four in their own right, and clarify how the three main branches are utter disappointments. These four groups are the Atheism Plus crowd, the Rational Nihilists, the Cringe Merchants, and the Liberalists. There is a significant amount of crossover within the latter three groups, but I will go over key figures that I have personally followed and give my opinions of each group and figure. The Atheism Plus community is the one group I'm completely opposed to. Figures like Steve Shives and Jen McCrate formed this community around the idea of fusing elements of the Atheism community with social justice. I could put Kyle Kalinske and David Pakman into the orbit of this group ideologically, but I do not see them as true members 
of the Atheism Plus community. This group is an overtly left-wing, progressive community that I pose for its embrace of… well, I'll just let McCrate say it for herself. We are atheists, plus we care about social justice. Atheists, plus we care about women's rights. Atheists, plus we protest racism. Atheists, plus we fight homophobia and transphobia. Atheists, plus we use critical thinking and skepticism. I oppose the concept of social justice, women's rights are a mistake, racism is a hollow bullshit magic word, I support transphobia and homophobia, and I don't believe in scientism. I do not believe that science can empirically derive virtue, meaning, or human meta-narratives. For these reasons, I'm not going to focus on this group of the skeptic community too much. The first group I want to seriously cover is the Rational Nihilists. These parasitic blobs are represented by The Amazing Atheist and The Cult of Dusty, both of whom I regretfully watched many years ago. The common theme of The Amazing Atheist channel is that all value is subjective and life has no meaning, but people can nonetheless somehow arrive at rational conclusions, such as feminism and social justice are stupid, welfare and nationwide economic justice is a good thing, and the moralists of the world have no right to tell him not to shove a banana up his ass. Do not look that last one up on Pornhub. The Cult of Dusty, on the other hand, is a militant atheist that believes that progress has been halted by all of these darn superstitions like religion and groupthink. If we would have discarded God a hundred years ago, we'd have colonies on Mars and an egalitarian paradise on Earth. But these darn bitter clingers just can't be rational. Can't they see that there's no bearded white man in the sky coming to help us? Why can't they see that obviously God didn't help your local football team score the last winning touchdown? These childish arguments easily debunk the fundamentalist trad Christian snake handlers, but the absolute lack of intellectual rigor has left this group as a relic of previous YouTube epochs. There's only so much Christian cringe that people are willing to tolerate before they get the message. At the end of their videos, they leave you with a smug sense of superiority. But to what end? They lack a coherent worldview. For instance, they'd say something like, sexual promiscuity is natural, but the problems start happening as soon as the rootless masses commodify and politically unify around these identities. They are totally consumed with the value of individual ego, but only when the egos act rationally like them. Subjugating people is wrong because I'm a freedom of speech and there's no such thing as objective morality, but my speech is better than your speech and my rationality is objective. No, this way of thinking is wrong. These degenerates shoving bananas up their asses is wrong. There is a world beyond the individual ego that people can interact and commune with. These atheists are the first people to criticize corporations, and communal institutions like the government and the church. However, what is left after the criticism? Crickets and consumption. They criticize consumption and materialism, but are themselves materialists and the biggest consumers. They are the Nietzschean Untermensch. Nietzsche's last man. They are pathetic bugmen, and I have nothing but pity for their shallow, hollow existence. The second group is the Cringe Merchants, embodied by Armored Skeptic, Shoe on Head, and Chris Raygun. They're almost exactly like the Rational Nihilists, but they're less insufferable and believe in a center-left, quasi-ideology. They will criticize the snake handlers like the Rational Nihilists, as well as complain about the SJWs and Conservative Inc. Their thing is complaining about the utopianism of socialists, the cringeworthy self-righteousness of SJWs, and the hollowness of neoliberalism, and then turn around and back the most incrementalist center-left policies imaginable, such as universal healthcare, social egalitarianism, bureaucratically regulated capitalism, and social liberalism. Men and women are lawful equals and can do whatever they want with their bodies, and the government should seize the means of production bureaucratically. But we are totally not Fabian socialists, we're just being rational. In their review of the movie The Joker, Armored Skeptic and Sean Head claimed that the message of the film was that Gotham's elites had neglected to give Arthur Fleck, aka Joker, the material and emotional support he needed. The city government has cut social welfare due to budget cuts and austerity, and a prominent TV comedian humiliated the poor mentally ill loser when he was down. Skeptic and Shu accept the role of the elites while the rational nihilists did not. They see that there is some abstract meaning in the world for individuals to find, but it's not God and the elites have a duty to invest in their plebs. 
However, just as they neglect the role of social fabric in real life, the two YouTubers neglect the role of social decay in Joker. In the movie, all social supports were knocked out from under the Joker's feet. The economic support of his employer when he was fired, his comedian idol turned on him, the psychiatric support of a useless city therapist was revoked, the social support of his mother and possible father was a lie, and his girlfriend, his emotional support, was imaginary. It is not just the government and elites that betrayed him, it was the whole of society. If the Joker had, say, a church community to go to, this might not have happened. If only single motherhood was not spurred on by the knock-on effects of the sexual revolution and the great society welfare programs like Section 8 housing. No, the cringe merchants are statists. They believe that the state can solve these great social ills because socially people are just nothing but a sack of potatoes and communitarianism is bad. Gaming and escapism are saccharine, sweet, hedonistic fun, and those feminists just won't leave my community alone. Like the rational nihilists complaining about the man and SJWs will only get you so far, and I don't see them taking up the mantle of supporting communal action or anything resembling social cohesion. My final group is the so-called liberalists, embodied by Sargon of Akkad and Count Dankula. They are a loose collection of so-called classical liberals, moderates that claim to stay for science, secularism, and freedom, and progressives that have been jettisoned from SJW circles for not being progressive enough. According to the Liberalist Society's website, they stand for individual rights, democracy, economic freedom, freedom of speech, self-reliance, blind justice, and secularism. This just boils down to civic nationalism minus social responsibility plus atheism, American Republicans minus religion plus slightly more or less economic statism depending on who you ask and which economic sector. In this diagram, B is in between the liberalists and cringe merchants because he embraces similar ideas to those of Sargon, but he isn't clever or coherent enough to come up with a cohesive worldview and his content is entirely based on SJW cringe. The liberalists tend to have a little bit more intellectual rigor in their worldview, basing it in a heavily distorted framing of classical liberalism in the mold of John Locke and David Hume. Seriously guys, two centuries of philosophy have happened and you're stuck in the enlightenment? Hegel, Heidegger, and Schmidt all happened. Sargon, it's okay that not all of the things you like are liberal with a capital L. I will also lump in a sizable portion of the so-called intellectual dark web into this group. The fatal flaw of this group is that they are progressives driving the speed limit, like conservatives, but they will never call themselves conservative. Count Dankula will hold up extremely libertine figures like Gigi Allen as his heroes, and then say, perhaps Gigi went a little too far. He will never say why it is wrong for Gigi Allen to do heroin, have sex with underage girls and animals, and beat and literally shit on his fans. Dankula wants to buck the established order, like South Park, but he doesn't follow libertinism to its logical conclusions or give reasons not to go full libertine. Getting back to my conservatism point, what I mean is that Eric Weinstein of the Intellectual Dark Web will speak out against SJWs for the sole reason of preventing a genuinely reactionary movement from arising to revolt against social progress. Social liberalism is only okay when it does not produce negative externalities like pathological resistors. People like short fat otaku and Sargon will assert that human rights are universal and should therefore be universally, globally enforced through American hegemony, just as neocons like Sam Harris prescribed. Civic virtue matters, but only if those virtues are virtues of the conserved progressivism. Islamic immigration and demographic change is okay so long as the Muslims and Mexicans consume like Westerners and tolerate degeneracy like Westerners. They are wrong. You need to be born into your place in society and embody the role your society expects of you, whether it is the role of your ethnic identity or your gender role. Sargon already ascribes to this view of gender and the role of the sexes. Sargon already ascribes to this view of national identity. Why can't he just apply this essential thinking to that of the nation. Let me make two analogies from the plays of Shakespeare. In the play Othello, the titular character Othello is a virtuous moor in Venice. 
He is a brave general in the Venetian army, he loves his adopted city, and he loves his Venetian wife Desdemona in spite of his racial heritage. Othello is a noble Venetian in the eyes of a civic nationalist. He is fully assimilated. He is Venetian. It is only the jealous creeps like Iago that take down such a virtuous man. The play Othello is juxtaposed to the play The Merchant of Venice. In that play, Shylock is a Venetian Jewish moneylender who demands a literal pound of flesh from the loved and respected protagonist Antonio. It is immoral acts and impulses like greed and usury that make a foreigner not Venetian. Also the fact that Shylock is not a Christian. Okay, so the Liberalist likes Othello, but does not like Shylock. The Liberalists are atheist and anti-social justice, but are okay with social liberalism and immigration so long as the host culture is not disturbed. The lie of setting up Othello as a Liberalist hero is the fact that both small-scale and large-scale immigration does not easily result in assimilation. It takes multiple generations and a virtual trickle of immigration to somehow assimilate immigrants. In my personal experience, a small community of Bosnians was set up in my downtown area of my hometown in the aftermath of the Bosnian genocide. Despite the small number of them, they were insular and lived incredibly close together in the poorer neighborhoods. The children of the refugees were still Muslim and still spoke their mother tongue, but at least they were less traditional than their parents. What if you had a city of nothing but ethnic communities, a patchwork of diverse people, all of whom had black hair, brown eyes, and brown skin. What is the liberalist argument against ethnic diversity? They support having a diversity of opinions in the marketplace of ideas because hegemony and censorship is bad. They don't like that brown people speak different languages, worship gods that don't support feminism, and they all vote for left-wing political parties. I thought that the liberalists aren't right-wing, a reasonable person would say. Didn't Sargon and Dankula run for the EU parliament on the ticket of the farthest right political party? Nah, they're center-left. Only people that support the liberalist interpretation of virtue are people of their ethnic group and some grifters. Obviously, people like Larry Elder, Candace Owens, and Kanye West care more about the black community than the white community. They say it themselves. How many black and brown people prefer the white community to their own? But identitarianism is bad. Caring about your own ethnic community is bad, especially when white people do it. It is the role of the liberalist to ensure that there are no personal preferences for extended kin groups anywhere, or events like Rotherham or Cologne will keep happening. If the Republicans are the Democrats of 20 years ago, the liberalists are the Democrats of 10 years ago. In their view, neoliberalism is bad, socialism is bad, diversity is bad unless everybody acts white and consumes, Christianity is fundamentalist and bad, prescriptive morality is bad because no morality should be in forced unless it fits within the 18th century morality. Drag queen story hour and hormone blockers for children is bad, but not on principle because the issue is informed consent. And neoconservatism and military inventionism is bad. Vote for Tulsi Gabbard, but don't take troops out of any of the Middle East shitholes because genocides might happen. And US military supremacy is the only thing keeping Russia and China from invading. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. While they were complaining about SJWs being too collectivist, they collectively took over all of the institutions and demonetized their channel. Skeptics write polemics. SJWs write training manuals. Now get bent, skeptics. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.